My name is Matthew Peterson. Um, I'm the co-founder and CTO of Mind Research Institute. And we're a nonprofit research institute, and we develop new ways to teach mathematics. The initial inspiration was I had a difficult time in school. I'm dyslexic, had a difficult time reading, didn't learn to read until I was almost in middle school. Um, and so uh, I really wanted, and also math was difficult. It wasn't just reading, because math is just taught through language. Um, but later, I gained a, an appreciation for math in a visual form and uh, really realized that uh, visual representations of math where students are able to interact with math visually and get rid of all the language and symbols could be a powerful way of overcoming language barriers. And so that was the original impetus um, to start this Mind Research Institute. I want to fix math education. Right now, like only 30% of students are proficient in algebra, and that is unacceptable. The reason algebra is so important to fix is it's, I mean, it's a problem any way you look at it. It's a national security problem because we have to import people from other countries that can do algebra because we can't get enough people in our own country that are able to be able to do algebra and be able to go on and do other things. It's a gateway to technology fields, science fields, and engineering, math fields. Um, and so we're only able to get 30% of kids to be proficient in algebra, and it's just not acceptable. And it's not like no one has tried. It's just we haven't done things that work. And so we think uh, that we're on to something. We have some evidence that what we're, what we're doing is on the right track to solve this problem. It's not an easy problem to solve. But um, I'm predicting over the next decade we will be able to get just about every student to be proficient or advanced in algebra. And we don't want to stop there. We want to go all the way through calculus and, and beyond. Um, and it's probably not only math, but we're focused on math right now. Well, yes, for a secret sauce, um, I think the heart of it is that we need to allow students to learn math by actually doing math. Um, the analogy I gave today during the talk was um, imagine a society where music was really important um, and they stipulated that all students need to be able to read and write, compose sheet music. But they were never allowed to listen to music or never allowed to play musical instruments. They only were, they just had to learn this very cumbersome thing of reading and writing sheet music. Um, and they would ask, why do we have to do this? And they say, well, later on it's going to be important. And only the scientists and the professors were able to actually listen to music and, and play musical instruments, but the students were not never allowed to do that. That's exactly like what is happening right now with math. We don't allow students to play with math, to touch it, to feel it, to interact with it, to do math. Um, and so learning by doing, I think, is the first step that needs to happen. Um, and we've built a program where students directly interact with mathematical mechanisms, hands-on with touch interfaces, and they're trying things out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work, seeing the consequences of, of an incorrect solution and why it didn't work, um, and adjusting and figuring things out and learning. Um, and so learning by doing has been highly effective, um, but that is not the complete solution. Um, you have to also have intrinsic motivation. So they have to, you have to build a love of math. Um, that's tricky to do, and we think that we've figured out ways to do that. You have to build persistence, um, because sometimes math gets difficult, and you can't spoon feed it, and they need to be able to overcome difficult things and persevere in problem solving. We think we got a handle on how to build persistence through intrinsic motivation. Um, and then there is systematically and strategically building up knowledge. And I, today I talked about how to do that using a, a schema-based approach. A schema being a highly interconnected cognitive framework for understanding a concept or a skill or um, uh, understanding anything. And you, you reason using schemas. And um, schema knowledge allows us to build up deep understanding and reasoning skills. Um, and I think the next frontier for us is really perfecting, if you will, our ability 
to systematically build up schema-based knowledge um, in mathematics. Um, and that will be the that'll be the next big step for us. Yeah, if people want more information, they can visit us at mindresearch.net. Um, and we, like I said, we're a nonprofit where we like to collaborate with districts um, to try to get this, get math learning happening. Um, and we're also really wanting to partner with other corporations um, in the STEM fields that also have a vested interest in fixing math education. Um, and we have some really strong partners right now. And really, just, I mean, I think, I think we need to build a whole coalition, if you will, of people that are dedicated to fixing the algebra problem. Up until recently, we've been focused on kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, we want to fix algebra, but we realize that you can't fix algebra in algebra. You have to start early and you have to build a proper foundation. So we've been really focusing on how to build that foundation in elementary school, um, kindergarten through fifth grade. It's definitely true that preschool knowledge going into kindergarten is super important and very, hi very highly predictive of later academic success. So we have a, a, we're piloting a pre-K program that's, um, that's really exciting. Um, and we're in the midst, heads down, building our Algebra 1 program right now. We have a middle school intervention program um, that is um, highly adaptive, has a diagnostic um, pretest um, that customizes the curriculum for each individual student um, and going all the way back to the second grade if necessary and trying to rebuild knowledge um, at the middle school level and, and that's going um, pretty well. There's um, quite a few next steps that we, we want to do with that to get that to where it needs to be. Um, but algebra, we think we have enough to make a big impact. Uh, we won't solve algebra. By solving, I mean getting every student proficient or advanced in algebra um, right out the gate, I don't think, but um, we're going to probably do at least two intensive iterations over multiple years where we do a lot of research onto what's working, what's not, do iterative design to change things in real time, um, and really hone it over, over, um, over a couple years. Um, and like I said, if that doesn't do the trick, we're in it for the long, long haul. So we're going to do whatever it takes to, to fix this problem.